peaceful forest scene. Oh my god, that <laughs> scared the crap out of me. Just out of nowhere. Is this foreshadowing? Is the next person that's gonna die ears? Mommy! <laughs> I'm ruining the mood, sorry. What a sleazy person. Knut's so naive, I don't think he would even put it together. Or would he? Thorfinn, maybe? He might have an inkling. Thorfinn has just fully settled into the role of crew member. <laughs> this is interesting for the dynamic between Knut and Thorfinn, though. This forces them together to interact on a one on one basis without Ragnar. There's something really key about Ragnar's absence for their dynamic, I think. And just for Knut himself as well. It's unclear how much he knows about his father's plot or suspects, but either way, he's just lost his one pillar of stability and influence with Ragnar's death. He now, like Thorfinn, is just de facto one of Asgard's crew. You'd expect him to lean into that a little bit, but there's also a lot of potential for the adversity to force him into gaining some something like a backbone, gaining some kind of personality structure, figure, figuring out who he is. Speaking of foreshadowing, and this is just a random insert at this point, but there was so much focus on the wine horn with Sven, I cannot but wonder if he's not going to be poisoned at some point. <laughs> Episode 16, History of Beasts. I think the big, the big monkey wrench in Asgard's plan is the fact that Sven was planning on killing Knut anyway. I don't know if he will figure it out, or it might take a while, just because he would be too terrified even thinking that right now. Bjorn is also majorly in the darkness. Oh no. I could be totally wrong about this, but I get the sense that... I mean, Asuka clearly has no problem with violence. No problem with killing. He doesn't seem to be the type to get anything out of unnecessary violence or killing. And I think the differences between the actions of Asgard and his men will be extensions of the differences in their levels of purpose in their lives. If you have a, a huge purpose, it seems like you'd be less likely to kind of scramble for the little petty thrills or the micro details of your, your life. What's a cheap thrill over the, you know, the glory of your vision? And I guess as an extension of that, you're less likely to be malicious for its own sake just because the kind of joy that these guys are taking in kicking this defenseless man comes from a joy of feeling the power over someone else because they lack that in their own lives. There's not really a lot of big things for them to hope for or look at besides just being in subservience to Asclad and getting in some fun or carnage where they can. It's also that people with power or people who know they have power don't feel the need to demonstrate it all the time when it's not necessary. <laughs> I say all that without having seen what Asgard wants to do with the shears. I'm terrified. They're just gonna do a haircut, right? Haircut? Haircut. He needs a haircut. Oh no! A little trim? A little trim? No! I hate torture. Ah! Ah! My fingers are in pain. My fingers are in pain. Ah, stop! Even Yorn is done. Would you like to be our leader? <laughs> you have a lot of guts, <laughs> but no power. Saxon Jin. <laughs> it wasn't bad enough that he got his fingers cut off, now he has to sit through a history lesson. That's his real pain. It's most evil looking owl. I mean, he makes a solid point. There's a few people innocent in history. It's sort of neither here nor there. I mean, the difference is that the current Danes are actually the perpetrators, whereas the existing Sacklins or Saxons, Anglos, whatever, are living on that legacy, but aren't really perpetrating those acts of violence themselves. And personally, I don't believe that descendants of people who committed atrocities are responsible for those atrocities, or at least for the committing of those atrocities. They're just responsible for, you know, dealing with the aftermath as best they can. In other words, addressing the, the current current world and the current problems that exist in the world they live in. It's not the same thing as them having done it. That being said, the idea of countries and 
groups is, it has real meaning, it has real symbolic significance, and it's important, but they're mental concepts at the end of the day. You know, there's land, and then there's people, and there's no actual such thing as, like, England, as a country of people. It's just, there's land, and there's people, and whoever inhabits it is inhabiting it, and we'll come up with whatever mental conceptualization of it that gives them identity and makes them stronger. There's definitely a real function to that kind of branding, you know, but it's not as real as the land and the people, is what I'm saying. And then there's this idea that's kind of terrifying that, at the end of the day, the most powerful thing for results in a sense is force you know it's like if you take two people with no real values or morality and just you know they have competing desires the one who is more physically strong or who is capable of harming or killing i guess the other party and is ready to do so will win over the person who's not able to do that it's like the law you know all laws are backed by the threat of force if you break a law and are pursued there are sometimes a lot of steps before the use of force but if you continue to resist and continue to fight back against those trying to apply laws on you the final step is force and probably death, which creates a real problem and an imbalance of power because people who are willing to do terrible things have that edge if they're willing to use force against people who are not willing to use force, which is partly why it's not enough for someone who is moral to just be moral. They have to be moral and strong. And it doesn't mean necessarily being a fighter themselves, you know, not all warriors carry swords, but it sort of means that they have to at least have the influence to inspire other people to stop doing their acts of violence or acts of aggression or inspiring enough people to that cause that there is enough of a backing that force against that side seems futile or dangerous or it creates consequences where it crosses a line where to the other side the benefits of using force are a lot lower than the benefits of finding some other peaceful resolution <laughs> oh no i was noticing how oh my no I hate it. I hate it. Ears! You're next. Can you not see? I don't think I ever realized that. I didn't notice his eyes before. I don't think so. Oh, right, because Thoracle is here. We flee. <laughs> not so tough now. That even gets a sweat drop or two out of Asklad. <laughs> the panic. It's so great. It's so great. And they've earned it. Because, yeah, the workload is terrifying. He's just a monster. And he actually has a weapon this time. Instead of just a tree. It was pointed out to me that his unit is also pretty badass. It's not just Thorkill doing all the fighting. They're a force. I love his fixation on Thorfinn, too. Seems to be of equal importance to him. Oh no, he looks so pathetic. He can't even hit right. Get a grip. I feel like with Canute, he's so frail. You could just tell him that you were going to do it and he would be dissatisfied with having any answer. Oof. Who's your daddy? No one's ever cared about me this enough to slap me. <laughs> can't say I blame them. And those are the first defectors we've seen from Asgard's crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a growing thing. Sentiment is turning. Asclad is in trouble. It's kind of make or break for Asclad, this battle, for this event. Oh, wow. It's not what I expected at all. A very confident maneuver, though. Another gamble. Or you can join Thorgal <laughs> and have a great time. This is the most thrilling, slow chase. <laughs> it's a walking chase. That's awesome. It's the monster is coming, nipping at your heels. That was amazing. That was amazing. It just defied gravity. Oh, you made a huge mistake. Oh my god, you made a terrible mistake. What a bad choice. Sign of weakness. All they need to do is keep up the pressure. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I thought about this weirdly in the context of dating people who have boyfriends. I know this is a very weird connection, but sometimes I'll meet girls I'm really attracted to and, you know, be developing something only to find out that they have a boyfriend that they've been hiding. And it's kind of tempting sometimes to not care, but it's also repulsive in so many ways. I mean, Putting aside the fact that I don't want to cut in on another man's life, relevant to what he just said, if someone is like that, if someone's dating while they have a boyfriend, they're probably going to do it to you too. So it doesn't really seem like a great way to start off with a lot of confidence. Not that it can't work, but you, know, you meet people in a certain context, it seems to me that at some point, it's likely you're going to experience the exact same thing as a very direct and logical form of karma. Yeah. 
It's cool how their management styles are so different too. Askeladd and Thorkel. Askeladd's very, you know, cunning. Thorkel's just brutal. It's like wit versus just power. It's clever. Lord, why have you forsaken us? I doubt your love. Kind of going through changes right now. Yeah, so Nah, oi. Oh, no, they're just gonna cross, but they might freeze at least. Oh, does Asgard have a bigger plan here? They could just cross the river on foot, but they would be vulnerable now. It'll make things a little more uncomfortable, uncomfortable for them, definitely slow them down. It's really, it's really exciting to see this. Asgard is under so much pressure. He knows. He knows the danger. He's paying attention. Uh, he knew before this is all happening. But knowing Thorkel, he's just going to show up and use the bridge as a weapon. All that lumber. Huh? <laughs> what kind of gamble is this? Exactly, yeah. I mean, that doesn't really take a very heightened sense. They're all openly talking about it. Things can change so quickly if they reach that kind of tipping point. Once the rest of them get a sense that there are others also wanting to defect, it's kind of over. I mean, I actually think that's a testament to Asklad, not a detraction. He's had terrible luck, but he just keeps finding a way, never gives up, barely even looks worried. He hasn't lost yet. Run! Your life is in danger. <laughs> All I see is bullets for Thorgol. The glint of their armor. There's a lot of them. Yeah, I guess they also greatly outnumber their crew. Run. Everyone run. Oh my god! Oh my god, that was awful and great at the same time. And with that one spear throw, Thorkel took out the rest of the army. You might want to move or leave. Why do I feel like this plan ends with them escaping and killing the traitors at the same time? <gasps> Did you just kick Snow and Astlet's face? There's no guarantee of anything, of any of this. <gasps> wow, it's happening right now. This could end up being a real small crew real quick. Thorfinn would side with Asklad, wouldn't he? Who's loyal? We got Asklad, Thorfinn, Jorn, Ears? And Canoe just sort of by default not doing anything. I feel like it's also probably a lot easier to be the, the chaser, the pursuer, than the pursued in terms of energy and emotional state. There's no danger to the pursuer, really, so they don't live in that constant state of dread and anxiety, and, you know, they can be judicious in how they spend their energy and time and what they eat, etc. The pursuit have no such luxury. They mess up once, it's over. This is such an exciting setup. It's really kind of amazing how, despite Asta being terrible, I'm rooting for him, and I, I want to see how he pulls this out. I mean, I suspect, actually, this is where his faction ends, but it's not the end of his journey, because really the important piece is not the, the crew, because he's done it once, he can do it again, and he can... He can rally a crew together. He knows what people like. He knows what people need. As soon as his circumstances turn around, he'll be right back at it. What he needs is the prince and a few people who are capable enough to keep them alive and to have, you know, a certain element of threat and force as they, they navigate as a small unit. In fact, it might even benefit them to lose the whole crew because they can move more nimbly, more quietly. I actually had a feeling that it would go this way just from the opening. There's shots of, you know, the handful of them wandering through the, the winter hellscape. But there's something about that that's so exciting, you know, to see Asklad, who is in this position of power, be reduced to kind of nothing, you know, to be stripped of his tools. Yet, you know, you kind of still know that he's gonna be great 
anyway, because his greatness doesn't come from his, his crew. It comes from him. That would also seemingly put a lot greater focus on the relationship between all the individual members, him and Thorfinn, him and Canute, and Thorfinn and Canute, and I guess also Bjorn, who's an interesting character in his own right. I cannot wait. The tension of this is amazing. It's, it's one of the most thrilling chase sequences I've ever seen, even though they're, you know, walking at 10 miles a day. Yeah.